You're listening to Tech Talk Central. Well, hello from eHealth Forum here in Athens, Divan Caraval. Um, this is Vicky Kolovo for Tech Talk Central, and I'll be speaking with Dr. Clemens Auer. He's Director General for the Federal Ministry of Health from Austria. Welcome. Welcome. So, to start with our first question, first of all, you're a keynote speaker, if I'm not mistaken, here. What was your speech about? About, uh, what was it? The evolution of the legal framework within the European Union. Aha, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> so, guys, don't forget this forum is all about policy, standards, yes. interoperability, so you don't really hear medical stuff, it's more the real essence behind yeah, the medical. You know, it's more technical than legal also. <laughs> yes, I agree, I agree. So, I do know that uh, when it comes to interoperability, Austria is leading the way. Um, in my opinion, from my readings, but do set me right if I'm mistaken, but I do want you to explain why a national interoperability framework for a country is important, its compliance with the European inter- interoperability framework, And tell me where Austria is. Mm. Yes, um, I think uh, it's more than 10 years ago that on the policy level we decided not to have uh, proprietary solutions anymore because um, uh, larger hospitals, conglomerates, um, and we do have such in Austria, you know, the big university clinics and and regional hospital uh, uh, conglomerates, you know, they all like to build and buy and purchase the technical equipment which was not interoperable. Mm-hmm. So many, many years ago, so that's all, more than 10 years ago, you know, we decided on the policy level that, uh, for example, that all the procurement and, and purchasing and, 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 and development issues involved in hospital information systems, we will, fo- we will follow the IAG profiles. Mm-hmm. And that was, more than 10 years ago, revolutionary because IAG was in Europe almost unknown. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, since we are a fairly developed country and uh, the, t- the technical people in the, in the hospital conglomerate said, you know, that's a good idea mm-hmm. because we, our equipment is close to fulfill the profiles we, which are used in I- IAG. So we were able to, 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 to find a consensus and it's working still then. So it's, it was a very pragmatic, not a very ideological, political, uh, heated question to do so. One. Second uh, thing, um, you know, on the national level, you always need lighthouse projects. Mm-hmm. And one of our of early lighthouse projects, you know, we started 15 years ago, was an electronic health card. Yes. It was, a, was, a, it was per se not a very intelligent card because it didn't wear any data, but, uh, the, um, but it was to identify all the uh, health insured people toward the healthcare provider. So it was an administrative card. Mm-hmm. First, so I'm not talking about the services with the cards, but what happened is, since we are a public <coughs> healthcare system, all of a sudden, all outpatient facilities, doctors, all pharmacies, all hospitals, all labs, all radiological institutions, and so on, were interconnected mm-hmm. because they had uh, data lines between. So. And, and that was a, a tremendous accelerator towards uh, uh, deploying other services because, you know, there were not, not the issue, you know, how, the, how are these uh, institutions and healthcare providers uh, are interconnected. So the, the electronic health card was a huge accelerator. And the, and the next big uh, lighthouse project was the electronic health record. So it's not a health record within hospitals only, but it's a cross-sectorial health record. And this project led to the fact that we have now a regulated, with good sound legal regulation, so to say with a good law, we have a, a, a patient ad- electronic identification system running, up and running. For every citizen? For every citizen. We have a, a, an electronic healthcare provider index up and running, so each and every healthcare provider is, il- is electronically identified. And we have also the measures and means and the technical infrastructure for authentication and authorization up and running. So this was, you know, you always need these lighthouse projects 
to identify the tools and mm -hmm. the miles, milestones or whatever, mm -hmm. the, the, the pits and parts around it, and to work on them. So and now, uh, actually, I'm in, in a wonderful position now because um, uh, this, the, to, to build all this, to create all this, to regulate all these things took us also 10 years. But next week, Monday, mm -hmm. we go with this electronic health record live. Oh, so great. this is the first thing, and this is you know, and this is a very uh, a sound and, and very comprehensive thing, so that outpatient, inpatient uh, facilities have access to this data, and also the patients via a portal. So this is a good example that we included from the very beginning on, also the patients to to have access to this uh, uh, data. So. And you know another good thing happened because you know you only can do that if you standardize documents, and that you know since we are following this IAG pass, yes, true. so all these documents are now are in CDA standards and mm -hmm. formats, and uh, you know you know what does it do to the healthcare provider? They only have one format anymore, and not 15, 20, 100 different style sheets. Mm -hmm. It's only one anymore. Okay, I think this is impressive, and I think I was right that Austria is leading at the forefront. No, yeah, there are other regions and, and, and countries which are also doing a very good job. Like? I think Denmark, we always should consider Denmark mm -hmm. very highly, uh, you know, and there are parts and pieces of such solutions in Sweden up and running. Mm -hmm. There are parts and bits of solutions in the regions in Spain running. Mm -hmm. Spain has a problem that the regions are not interoperable very much. So, yeah. so our little federal states in Austria, we didn't make that mistake. So mm -hmm. they all can communicate now, which is, which is other. So we didn't, don't have these internal borders. Uh, but I, I have to be fair and open. So there are solutions in many countries. But I think the Austrian solution is a comprehensive solution. Well, in my opinion, um, and getting mm. involved in the health sector is usually if you are at the forefront, that's sort of you're the initial player that sets the games and the policies, and then you have followers behind you. So um, I do envy that when it comes to Greece as my country. I would love to see us being there also at the forefront. It's not like who's better at it. Yeah, but, but Greece is on the forefront in one big aspect. I it's know. It's a prescription. Correct. See, and the thing is, you know, because, you know, I, I'm a director general now for more than 10 years. And, and, uh, and see, e-health, you know, it's not my prime job to push e-health. You know, I'm in charge of health economics and the planning and the functioning of the health system. But I discovered very early on as a policymaker that ICT, that ICT is um, uh, ICT is uh, um, uh, um, uh, an enabler mm -hmm. of integrating care uh, in a fragmented system, and I, I discovered that strategically very early on. And th this is the reason why I'm running like a shepherd dog around the many herds of technicians and lawyers and uh, doctors and other healthcare providers that they really. Uh, implement and live and like ICT in health because it, it is an enabler of integration in a fragmented world of healthcare, uh, 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 of healthcare services. So this is so I for me it was always a strategic chance. And since we are pretty advanced, you know, I always thought you know I would like to have Europe dancing according my music <laughs> yep. and. Uh, so that that maybe European regulation or European d developments are not uh, uh, um, uh, uh, hammer, uh, you know, hindering me to do my job in, the, in my country because you know this is all investment. Mm -hmm. That's real money. Yes. And I don't want to produce stranded investment because some inter intelligent guy in the European Commission all of a sudden has another idea. Yeah. Okay. Let's not get into <laughs> that. But. Tell me what's the next step in in uh, Austria's health strategy. So in the in on the ICT level, yes. uh, um, say now we now we have to stabilize this electronic health record uh, uh, system, you know, and 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 to enhance that, you know, we start with with uh, with three uh, types of documents, you know, discharge uh, files and laboratory files and uh, everything out of radiology and e medication. 
So we will have an e-medication database, which uh, will be with that. And, uh, and to be honest, I think that will change the behavior and the culture of prescribing drugs in yeah. the, tremendously because each and every prescriber of a drug has a life status of uh, the prescription of, of, of his and uh, of his or her patient yeah so that and that will enhance the quality of prescribing you know all these issues we have polypharmacy etc yes, yes. et you know uh, uh, will, will not be solved but but uh, there is an is a, is a instrument a powerful instrument to re reduce the risks so we have to stabilize it but we already have an, a, a third lighthouse project and that is a telephone and web-based triage uh, systems. Can you uh, explain that? Yeah, man, this is, uh, we are not at the forefront there because uh, NHS has that for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this... Uh, um, um, oh, I get yes. NHS 24, yes, yes. Uh, for example, in, in, in Scotland, yes. uh, which is always my reference. They're doing amazing work. This they're also very good at it. They're, they're very good at that, you know, and they started that, I think, more than 10 years ago because, you know, why? what is behind it? You know, uh, healthcare, as we all know, is, is tremendously expensive and uh, we would like, you know, as a... You know, as a as a, a uh, as a regulator, as an organizer of the healthcare system, I would like to see the patients at the best point of service, mm -hmm. and that is not always achievable because the patients are independent and strong-willed, and they 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 go wherever they want. Mm -hmm. Well, it's their health. Yeah, it's their health, and it's okay. You know, yeah. I, I'm you know, it's uh, there's a freedom, but. Um, uh, sometimes uh, uh, people enter the healthcare system at the wrong place. True. Uh, and then they get sent around. Mm -hmm. And then and they're sad about it. And then they're sad they about it. They complain, and it and it, it it's costly. Yes. Uh, um, and uh, and this, this uh, I think the NHS services there, these telephone and web services, are a good example. The, the, it, we, these services don't solve the problem totally, no. but they are a good instrument to lower the risks. And you know, if people, if they, as long as they have time and the will to do so, can you know, over telephone have a first consultation. Uh, or what is the best point of service for the symptoms I yes. I'm feeling? Yes. Uh, uh, and 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 the nurse at the telephone can say, okay. Um, you know, just drink a, a, a hot pot of tea uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and see what happens next day. Uh, or, th this sounds very urgent, uh, uh, call the, the ambulance and, and, and go to the, uh, yes. to, to the, to the, to the to next the ambulance, hospital, yes. to the hospital. Or, uh, uh, your symptoms are of that, that you, you can go to the family doctor, general practitioner the next day. It's important. It's, it's almost 50% so, of the, exactly, what's ever happening to them. Yes. Exactly. So, and I think these kind of services are key for the system. And, and they, are, uh, they are for the people. Uh, and first of all, they are for the people, and secondly, they are an instrument which can help to, for cost reduction, cost saving. Okay. Um, that's our third lighthouse project. That's interesting, <coughs> and hmm. we'll be reading about it. Um, just go to another complete different space, and I want to ask you about e-health companies. Mm. What would you consider competitive advantages of European e-health companies, Austrian, compared to the bigger market, which we should not only include America states anymore, but it should include Latin America, China, India maybe, yeah. and Africa then. Um, <clears throat> I'm not comparing, it's not just how, but I'm saying the states and China and Latin America, and then I consider India and Africa like a second type of market. But... Um, what would you say is our competitive advantage? How should e-health companies go out and uh, compete? See, um, you know, I'm, I'm not an economist and I'm not from the industry. I'm a, a government, you know, and a policymaker. Uh, and, and I only can take whatever is on the table. But I, for me, you know, I was talking about that we adopted this policy in Austria to only use profiles according to IAG. Mm -hmm. And when, I, when, when that came up to my table, my desk uh, in the beginning, uh, I, I was astounded that, is, that IG is coming from America, yeah. from the other side of the Atlantic. Uh, and I always ask then my uh, uh, companies, the Austrian companies, the German companies, or the European companies, mm -hmm. or 
the economic associations behind, you know, why is that an American thing and not a European thing? Because IAG definitely is supporting small and mid-sized companies mm -hmm. and not the big wigs. Because I remember very well that Siemens and IBM and the other big players, they always opposed IAG very much in, very, mm -hmm. in the very beginning. Later yeah. on, they, they jumped on the bandwagon. <coughs> but in the beginning, they, they were not very supportive of that. And see, I think uh, in an environment like, like IAG, you know, with, with, <laughs> with, with, with all this philosophy of connected ones yeah. and, and shared and, and shared communications, and communications like. is a tremendous, uh, a, a tremendous advancement for small and mid-sized companies because they can play mm -hmm. in the field. And in the moment, this is even part of procurement regulation mm -hmm. or procurement issues, then it's even stronger. Yeah. So that we don't rely only on the big, big players. Yes. The big, big players always tend to promise the, the bluest sky in the universe. And the reality is different because we need local solutions. Yep. The local solutions sometimes are dangerous because they are, might be proprietary. Yeah, and not interoperable, yeah. but with 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 frameworks and uh, standards and standards. Yeah, but with standards and and profiles like you know once again like IG, IG we, yeah. we 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 have good regulations or mechanisms uh, not to build too much proprietary solutions in the field. Marcello Melgara from Italy said exactly the same thing, mm. that companies, European companies should follow standards. Yes. And then they have the um, competitive advantage of the languages, different languages, different yes. cultures. And, and language, is you important. know, the language is not the barrier. Yeah. The language is not a barrier. See, and then, then the other thing is, <coughs> I think we, we, we also should work um, uh, hard, and that's hard work. On, on, on a certain standardization of terminologies. Mm -hmm. You know, the terminolo terminology, uh, terminologies, <laughs> the sem semantics is, yeah. is the big issue. And uh, I haven't found... But that derives from ICT in general. That's, yeah, but in the, in the health system, it's even worse than yeah, in the course. other sectors of ICT. Because uh, I think, uh, you know, that's so many times science-driven you know, a good clinic, a good professor has a wonderful idea, you know, and starts a new terminology set. And then uh, uh, I don't know uh, where that leads to, you know, that leads to confusion sometimes. So I think we should work on that um, uh, rapidly to have a, a shared instruments uh, to harmonize that and uh, to map that or transcode that uh, so that we have and that's also important for the competi competitiveness. Well, there's a lot of problems, but they will be solved in the long run. We're at the beginning, consider yes. Internet of Things, and there's a lot there. Yeah. So we'll go to our last question, not to keep you more, on medical software certification. In your opinion, do we need it? Is it there? Or and who should implement it? <laughs> it's a tricky question. Um, see, see, we talked about standards. Yep. And if uh, as long as people play along the standards and the rules, then the, 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 the question of certification mm -hmm. um, is a second question. It's not a prime question then. Um, yes, but who should... Um, it's a little bit... If there was a big conversation. Uh, as many people as I asked, I got different answers. Sometimes they were splitting up the kind of apps like into wellness mm. and... Um, more medical. Yes. Which was not okay. really obvious okay. in my mind. I, 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 yes, I see very. So who's assessing? I see where you where you're going and with your what's the background of your question. See, I'm a policy guy. I'm a regulator. Mm -hmm. So for me, that question is very easy. Mm -hmm. uh, in the moment, an app, how wonderful the app is, is uh, uh, interoperable somehow. With, with digital data in the public realm of healthcare, mm -hmm. it has to be standardized and it should be certified. Because otherwise we're getting a new layer of problems. You know, because, you know, uh, I think each and every month there is a startup company sitting in my office promising me this best solution with a new app. Yes. But, you know, I am overwhelmed. 
you know, I can't look into the source codes and into the technical details of the application. Uh, uh, and, and if they want to be interlinked with, let's say, the Austrian health record system, yes, they have to follow the rules. But who's got the rules? Who's implemented them? No, or who should enforce uh, them? Yes, but there are, there are data protection and data security issues, you know, and we have regulated them. So they at least should read the Austrian law, you know. You know. Okay, so they're there. The, yes, they are there. And, and, then, and then I think we should have, you know, and once again, in, a, in the moment where, where one of these apps, and I'm not, I'm not talking about the well-being apps, I'm talking about the more... Um, uh, um, the apps which are monitoring, as, you know, all yeah, kinds yeah, of, yeah. Uh, of of diseases or chronic diseases. But if they want to be interlinked to to other record systems, then then we should have this the safety and security that they are working properly. And therefore, in in that in that area, certification might be a good answer. Well, uh, you do know that the European Union has already made a code of conduct. They've published it. Yes. It's under conversation. Yes, so we, are, we are very happy. It's a beginning. We, we are very happy that the European uh, Commission is uh, moving for European standards. Yeah. Very, fa- uh, very quick on that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we have a very, very close um, conversation. The member states uh, and and the Commission has have very close co- uh, conversations on that, because you know this is an issue which we shouldn't solve 28 times within the European Union. We should on that. That's an issue we only should uh, 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 solve. Uh, yep. one time. Mm, it's the same thing I heard from Henrik Martins from Portugal. Yes, exactly we are very close friends and colleagues, so no surprise. Amazing gentleman also. Yes, uh, uh, <laughs> no surprise that you hear the same from him. Oh, it's because interesting that's because our philosophy, that's our philosophy. The, that's a, <laughs> this is what I love because we're so close. We might be a big, Europe is big, but honestly, I've realized that around e-health, people are very connected. They yes. know very well who's who. There is an e-health family, yep. and 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 uh, and Epsos is uh, this large scale pilot the commission yes. started many years ago, which is over, but you know that facilitated the the, the creation of an e-health family, and uh, on the policy level, you know people like uh, Henrik Martins and me and others and many capitals, we know each other and we like each other and we are able to to solve problems in a very quick way. Yes, get on the same page as yes. the Americans say. Yes. So thank you for this uh, conversation. I think it wouldn't stop. We could keep on going. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, it was my pleasure. This was Vicky Colavu interviewing Dr. Clemens Auer, Director General for Federal Ministry of Health from Austria. Bye from Tech Talk Central for now. Thank you.